John Africa, the movement. Vincent Liebhart, born July 26, 1931, stood as a black revolutionary, a native of West Philly, and a Korean War veteran who had a revolutionary idea with environmental and animal rights, such as Back to a Natural Movement. Move, which still exists today, was founded in 1972 by John Africa. The movement was formed around principles and members of the move changed their last name to Africa to honor the continent Africa. They described themselves as family. The movement would protest at political rallies, pet stores, and even a zoo. They believed in homeschooling and spoke on war and police brutality. Some neighbors agreed with their mission others found it to be insane. Though they had run-ins with authority that were frequently. Around 1978, a standoff took place after then Mayor Frank Rizzo, who was a racist white man who had no relationship with black residents nor activists. Rizzo had by just enough with move. He ordered for members of the move to be removed from their home. But that didn't end too well. Confrontation between the move and police ended in the death of a police officer and 16 other officers wounded. Nine members of move were beaten by police and arrested and convicted of murder, sentenced to life. They adapted the nickname Move Nine. After four years, in 1982, Moo relocated to a middle-class black neighborhood on Old Stage Avenue. But neighbors would complain to the city about trash around the row houses, confrontation with residents, and how they would go around broadcasting their messages on Bullhorn. Three years later, Moo continued there teaching until then Mayor Wilson Goody the first African American mayor ordered them to be evicted so officers took to the streets of Osage with a door to door order of eviction that turned into a day long ordeal which resulted in a standoff smoke bomb shooting and the dropping of a bomb landing on Move headquarters. After all the smoke was clear, 10 dead, including John Africa, five children killed by the Philadelphia Police Department. Only two survived. Ramona Africa, who was later sentenced to seven years. And Michael Ward, aka Birdie Africa, 36 years ago. Here's a clip for Ramona Africa. In the party walls of our house, you know, the walls that connected each house, because Osage Avenue was a street of row houses. Each house was connected. So they went in the houses on either side of us and said they wanted to blow three inch holes in the wall to insert tear gas. This was the first use of explosives. Um, they did not just blow three inch holes in the walls. Um, they blew off the whole front porch of our house. And then they started pumping, you know, tear gas into the house. Again, we were in the basement, and um, when that failed, you know, to, to flip.
flushes out, the tear gas fail, the flushes out. Then they open fire according to their admissions. They shot at least 10,000 rounds of bullets in on us. And if they admit to 10,000, you can probably double it. They used up all the ammunition. And after they had to send to the armory for more ammunition. And they had 50 caliber machine guns, M60 automatic rifles. They had 9 millimeter Uzis. They had M16s. Sniper rifles with silencers on them, and that's something else I'm still trying to figure out. Why did they need silencers? Silencers are the weapon of an assassin. Why did they need silencers? Why would they care about being heard shooting if they were just doing their job? You know? Um, so they had all these weapons. They had a 20 millimeter armor piercer anti tank gun out there. They had the makings of a bomb which they brought there. They didn't have to go send for it. They had it out there with them, the C4, a military explosive that no municipal police department has. They got it from the FBI, from a, a Michael Macy's, you know. Um, <clears throat> so...